So, it's time yet again for another volume of Mushoku Tensai. This time, Volume 9. And, well, this one's a pretty fun one to me, personally. For those of you who need a refresher for what happened in Volume 8, uh, Rudy has enrolled in the Magic College of Ranoa, if I pronounced that right, as he tries to figure out a way to cure his ED that he got like three volumes ago, while also doing a bit more magical research. Along the way, he makes a new friend, and Fritz, who we all know, but he doesn't, is secretly Sylphie, his old childhood friend from way back in Volume 1. Anyway, along the way, he ends up uh, the boss of a pair of troublemaking beast girls, reunites with Zenoba, and helps them craft dolls or figures, while also beginning his research into teleportation magic. So, what's this book mainly about? Well, mostly uh, Rudy and his core relationships with those around him. Uh, growing relationships with those around him. We start off our first early chapters focusing on Cliff, a fellow classmate of Rudy's who's also the kid that Eris went goblin hunting with on the quest back in Volume 8 in her special bonus chapter, or fill-in chapter. And, well, it's a story about love. You see, Cliff's falling in love with Elena. Or, Elenice. Uh, I'm just going to call her Ellen for the rest of this video. If you can remember her, she is the busty elf woman with the curse on her that makes her have to bang nearly all the time or else she'll die suddenly. Very specific curse. Anyway, it's an interesting chapter because Rudy's like, this guy's way too pure for her. But he decides to say, you know what, they're adults, they can make their own decisions, and does an introduction for the pair. It's an interesting way to start the volume, but it kind of sets the stage that this is mostly going to be about Rudy and relationships more than just Rudy's personal journey this time around. As a lot of this, uh, as a lot of this volume focuses on Sylphie as she continues to try to get Rudy to notice her, at least as her instead of as Fritz. But because of her mix of shyness and not wanting to ruin what she feels is a good relationship with Rudy right now, she continues despite noticing that Rudy is still gathering people around him and feeling a bit jealous that well some of those people include other girls. Because again, she's in love with them but doesn't want to admit it as of yet. And something else about this volume is a major spoiler. Nanahoshi. So I'll give you a few minutes or moments. Just uh okay, the people with spoilers down or gone. Uh I mean it doesn't make that much of a difference. I'm just gonna watch this video anyway. Uh so who is Nanahoshi? Nanahoshi is the young woman that was spotted traveling with Orsted way back about two volumes ago when Rudy was, well, killed by him. In fact, her words were what told, basically, Orsted to give Rudy a chance, despite, you know, the boy being dead at his feet. As it turns out, obviously from a rather Japanese-as-hell name like that, she's, in fact, from Japan. In fact, she's the girl who Rudy died trying to save alongside her friends back when he died in his original life. But... She's stuck in this world, and unlike Rudy, who was reincarnated, she was full on isekai and trapped in this world in her original body. And she may or may not have been a direct cause of the Bond disaster, or at least her appearance in this world is directly tied to said disaster. So what does she want to do? Well, she just wants to go back home. She hates it in this world, and she has an ace a day since she got here. Yeah, she's basically frozen in time and hates every moment she's stuck in this medieval fantasy world. It's kind of interesting because they have a deep conversation about how she wants to go back and how Rudy could care less about their, their original world. And I kind of feel sorry for Sylphie in the middle of this because she's just in the room while they're talking in Japanese and she's utterly confused about what's going on. She's like, the fuck are these people saying? <laughs> Uh, this leads to a rather interesting partnership where they try to learn about more, uh, try to learn more about teleportation magic, because well, that's kind of a very rare magic in this world. 
but just like the last volume, the best chapters of this one are Sylphie's chapters. For her part, it does continue the story of her trying to figure out what she wants out of a relationship with Rudy, as I stated earlier. And eventually discovering, to no one's surprise, she's absolutely in love with him and wants to get married with him. Uh, married to him, everything else be damned. It's really cool to see her finally reach this conclusion and make up her mind, especially because she's literally pushed into a corner. But <laughs> she's already pushed into a corner because of the princess who's like, Look, I'm tired of this, will they, won't they bullshit? You're either gonna do or don't. <laughs> and she doesn't say it like that, but it is still kind of funny. <laughs> And, you know, her actually having friends who will give her some assistance and help her play matchmaker is really sweet, considering how lonely she was in her village originally. As well as some of the funniest stuff in the volume, all things considering. Outside of that, it's very much the same as the last volume, considering it's still using the school setting and the school life concept. And there are some interesting takes. I mean, there are no stakes here, but there are some interesting takes, such as the arrival of a local demon god. Well, not local. It's the husband of the demon god that gave Rudy his demon eye, who's here to test Rudy's strength. And leads to, well, Rudy being shown as one of the strongest people in the entire school yet again, and everyone being afraid of him, which is kind of hilarious. But there's also a bonus chapter, which gives us a sneak peek into what Eris has been up to. Which is, as you can expect, training, training, and more training. Anyway, with this volume down, the world opens up a little bit more thanks to the small, big changes that the volume introduces, as this school life arc seems to be coming to a close. Kinda happy it only stuck around for as short of as it did, because I'm happy it didn't overstay its welcome. Or at least, its setting has basically played out for most of the stuff. I know we're still going to be stuck here for a little bit longer, but I'm happy to see that we're going to be focusing more on other stuff instead of just school life stuff for a good minute now. So, with that said, I enjoyed the volume. I look forward to getting to volume 10 sometime in the near future, and I hope everyone, if anyone ever watches this video, is also enjoying the ride. Mishoku Tensai is a very divisive series, but it's one I've come to really enjoy through my reading of both the manga and now the light novel, as well as the viewing of the anime, which uh, will be getting its second core, hopefully, uh, early next year. Or is it supposed to be late this year? I don't remember which right now, and I'm not looking it up. So, until next time, everybody.